Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. So far we've talked about the first four commandments, and now it's time to tackle the fifth, Thou shalt not kill. We've begun talking about whether particular actions can be considered murder, and now it's time to discuss scandal. Is that murder? Once again, we need to know what scandal is if we're going to answer this question. Most people today seem to think scandal means embarrassment. However, that's utterly false. The real meaning of scandal as a sin is leading someone else to do evil by some act, attitude, or behavior. The Catechism says it very well. Scandal is an attitude or behavior which leads another to do evil. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2284, first sentence. This definition works well for all intents and purposes, but there are still a few areas where confusion might arise. So for now, let's take a closer look at two points in specific. What it means to lead another into evil, and what is meant by an attitude or behavior. First, on the subject of leading people into evil, some might think that any time you tempt someone, even by accident, you're basically doing this. However, that's not what lead means in this context. I might be behaving as morally as possible, and that still might result in my son, for example, turning to evildoing because he doesn't agree with me about good and evil. Maybe it's even because he dislikes my example that he turns to evildoing. However, this is not leading someone into evil. It can't be leading, because leading implies that a person being led is following the leader. And in this example, my son is clearly not following me. Leading someone into evil consists of doing evil yourself, and in doing so, setting a bad example for others, or in some way coaxing or encouraging them to do evil as well. Since this kind of leading involves evildoing, it follows that the attitudes and behaviors referred to are evil as well. A scandalous act or behavior can be open disregard for authority without some adequate justification, for example, or breaking one of the commandments, or refusing to put sincere effort into holiness. These kinds of behaviors can wind up teaching others the wrong lessons, or even teaching them not to listen to you when you have good advice to give. In a sense, the word behavior encompasses evil actions as well, since all of our actions are part of how we behave. An evil attitude or an evil view expressed misleadingly may be just as damaging. Worst of all, perhaps, is when a person in a position of authority sets the stage so that it becomes almost impossible to avoid doing evil, like a teacher deliberately encouraging anger at authority figures in her students, or a businessman setting some policy for his business that requires some form of evil to be supported by the business itself, thus tainting its every transaction. The enshrining of grave evil as a law or legal precedent is perhaps the worst form of this. But can this be murder? The answer is that in some ways, this can be an even worse type of murder than all of the others put together. If a person learns from you how to be evil, and remains evil their whole life, then dies unrepentant because of you, their soul itself will be consigned to hell, which the Bible refers to as the second death, a death beyond death. That's not even taking into account that the person might be led, by example, into a pattern of behavior, such as drinking and driving, that might result in their physical death as well, I would say that this sort of thing clearly qualifies as murder by negligence, which leads us to our next episode, Negligence in Dangerous Situations. Is that murder? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.